John O'Keefe, a Boston police officer, was found outside of a home last winter in Canton, Massachusetts. Prosecutors said that O'Keefe and his girlfriend, Karen Reed, were at C.F. McCarthy's, which is a bar in Canton, with several friends on the night of January 28th. Then they went to the Waterfall Bar and Grill across the street around 11 p.m. where they stayed for about an hour. And then after the Waterfall Bar and Grill, they ended up going to a house party at a police officer named Brian Albert's home. But then hours later, John O'Keefe would be found fatally injured outside of that house. In this episode of Cauldron Convos, we're going to be discussing how John O'Keefe was found dead outside of a home in Canton, Massachusetts, in the snow, in a blizzard, whether or not Karen Reed was actually the one who murdered her own boyfriend, or if police officers were involved in a cover-up murder of their own fellow officer, John O'Keefe. Or a tragic accident. Or a tragic accident that know. no one seems to either remember or want to admit. Because jail. My name's Kayla. This is Zenu, baby. And we are Cauldron Convos, and welcome to another episode. We're going to be doing a true crime case that's happening right now. It's somewhere near Boston. Huge case. This is taking the whole community by storm. There's They're, they're having these town hall meetings where they're voting on things. On what? As a New Yorker, though, I haven't heard this. Yes. So it's it's not really like a nationally covered case, but it's big in the Boston area. If you're from anywhere else in the United States, you probably don't, but you should because this is a little crazy. Okay? You don't this is not every day where you get a cop that's murdered, one, a cop that's murdered by his girlfriend, two, allegedly, a cop that's murdered by his girlfriend during the night that he was with other cops that may have murdered him. Yeah. I think this just involves all of the best parts of our society. A murder mystery. A girlfriend. A dirty girlfriend. Cops. Yay. And corrupt cops. How about dirty cops, fine girlfriend? I guess it we depends don't know. on who you ask. If you're asking Turtle Boy or not, who's another big part of this case. But we'll talk about the blogger Turtle Boy and his involvement in it and how he's kind of popularized this and how we've heard about it from some fellow internet folks some some subscribers of ours shout out to all of our premium subscribers shout out we have a membership now if you're interested Chris, in joining iron wolf pantherism dale wood frodo swaggins craig you're an icon you are the moment and thank you so much for giving us this topic but we're gonna cover all of the evidence that we have we're gonna try to do a timeline but obviously we can't touch every single point of it so john o'keefe the police officer was found outside of a canton massachusetts home in the snow specifically on the morning of january 29th 2022 so it's like 10 and a half months since then i guess almost 11 what so this is 10 months, 10 and a half what? It's 2023. Yeah, 2022. Oh my God, this has been going on for over a year, two years almost. Yeah, do you think Turtle Boy's written a blog every single day? Prosecutors stated that O'Keefe and his girlfriend named Karen Reed were at C.F. McCarthy's bar in Canton, Massachusetts, a.k.a. a classic Irish pub on the night of January 28th and then they went to Waterfall Bar and Grill across the street around 11 p.m. where they stayed for about an hour. They left and went to a party at the home of Brian Albert who is also a fellow officer, police officer, not like a Nazi officer. Well, what? I was trying to think of another type of fine, not a pilot. Military officer? Fine, military. A first officer on an airplane? A sexy officer? Nazi. Nazi. I don't know. Don't worry, guys. He's not a Nazi. Don't Thank worry. Thank you for clarifying. And hours later, O'Keefe would be found fatally injured outside of that same house owned by Brian Albert. Not the Nazi officer. The police officer. <laughs> and Karen Reed, his former widowed girlfriend, told police she dropped John O'Keefe off at the house shortly after midnight and went home because she was having stomach issues. Now, we've all been there. I don't blame her. More times than I'd like to admit. Let's just say Karen didn't read the situation too well. <laughs> Sorry. I'm done. Or Karen read or Karen didn't read the nutrition information on the bar menu at uh, O'Grady's or whatever it's called. You know, she's lactose and she she ate a little she ate a little jalapeno popper, didn't know that there was cheddar in that. 
That's tough. There's a lot of Irish diarrhea jokes I'm thinking of. Well, they're doing a lot of reading on the toilet. You know, if Dale Wood was here, he'd have That's something. That's good. They're doing a lot of reading on the toilet. Let's just say Karen did a lot of reading on the toilet that way. Hey, you stole my <laughs> joke. I have this on recording. Karen Reed returned to the home with two friends early in the morning after she was unable to get O'Keefe to respond to her calls and texts, and they found him unresponsive outside of the home of Brian Alberts on Fairview Road in the snow amid blizzard-like conditions. So, okay, ready? So here's, set the scene. Karen Reed allegedly dropped him off. Her boyfriend, you know, they, they've been drinking. They're at a bar. She drops him off. She had she seven leaves. drinks. She leaves. She's she has diarrhea. Animal. She has stomach issues. Okay. Yeah, I would have stomach issues too after seven drinks. Mind you, driving issues. We're not even going to mention that. But. Okay, don't hate on Karen Reed, all right? You know, we're, I'm not we're doing, hating. We're trying to be middle I for am... now. We haven't even touched on that yet. Okay, sorry. First, we're touching on the toilet paper, and then we're touching down on the... Touching down on the toilet seat. So that's what I meant to say. So after she couldn't get in touch with John O'Keefe, her boyfriend, she eventually, you know, she's calling the people at the party. She goes back to the home that the party is at, and they find him unresponsive on the road in the snow amid these blizzard-like conditions. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to think of another joke. Yeah, me too. I was thinking of, like, the diarrhea that, that, that entails from Dairy Queen. Okay, we, enough poo-poo jokes for now. You know who's the Dairy Queen? Karen Reed. <laughs> she's the diarrhea queen. Dairy, yeah, dairy, though. She's eating But they, dairy. there's nothing. They didn't go to Dairy Queen. Yeah, they didn't, but it's blizzard-like conditions. Dairy Queen blizzards. <laughs> But is Dairy Queen even franchised in Massachusetts? Probably there's a Dairy Queen in every local neighborhood. Use mm. code Kayla Cauldron for fit. Imagine. Iconic. Karen Reed was actually arrested just three days later on suspicion of hitting her boyfriend, John O'Keefe, with her SUV and leaving him amongst the snow to die. She was initially charged with manslaughter and pleaded not guilty to second degree murder. And then an autopsy took place, and the autopsy found several abrasions to O'Keefe's right forearm, two black eyes, a cut to his nose, a two-inch left... Sorry, I'm, like, demonstrating. I'm doing, like, the whole... Was she going, like, 50 miles an hour? <laughs> I know, right? In a blizzard? They found a two-inch laceration to the back of his head <laughs> and multiple skull fractures. As someone that's been hit by a moving car... You have? Yeah, skateboarding. Mm. I was in New York City. I was being reckless, and I was hit by an wow. Uber. I was cut up, but I didn't have two black eyes. Yeah, they would have to be going pretty fast, especially like for a police officer that's a man that's like probably a little thick -um, like thick, not thick, like, you know, just like a like sturdy guy. dumb thick. Not, it's not like a tiny little petite. Well, I've not seen, not I've seen you don't see many spindly thin. cops, but I've seen some. Additionally, hypothermia was also believed to be a contributing factor in his death. So he was knocked out enough to be able to not get up, which I don't know how long hypothermia would be, you know, take See, place. See, at that point, though, it's like saying someone that died of a heart attack who was COVID positive died of COVID. Mm. It's like insult to injury. Yeah. It's like. He's probably dead anyway, but he also yeah. froze. <laughs> but it is an interesting point because it's like, well, he could have kind of gotten up. Because the hypothermia, the evidence of hypothermia in the pancreas or whatever the organ, I forgot what it was, it wouldn't have shown unless his, he was alive. alive for a significant amount of time for the hypothermia to set in as well. well the fact that he was somewhat alive where, like, whoever either put the, him there or hit him or whatever, they knew they... Well, I'm not going to say they knew he was alive, but if someone moved him there, they knew he was alive at the time. So, but isn't snow soft? Yeah. So I'm well, just trying to think of the physics, right? If he's going to get slammed by a car, mm. dude, Karen must have been like Tokyo drifting down this street. Yeah. Fucking hits him. He flies into the snow. He, How, how do you have two black eyes and... A knocked noggin on the back. Unless you get hit by the front and you go boom. No, no, no. The black eyes are apparently just from internal bleeding. So, like, if you hit it in the back, it could just, like, give you black eyes, apparently. But I want to know, like, even if you fall backwards and hit your head on concrete, I don't think you would get that many skull fractures. Maybe if there's, like, a 
boulder or a brick or a what you know what i mean like if it's a driveway where there's like cement blocks or something and you hit your head i can yeah. see that being like a skull fracture enough or to pass out whatever. you'd be surprised if how people just... die like you, you know oh, they say yeah, to not even true. punch people in the face you win every fight you don't get into because if you punch someone in the and face at die. the bar and they die you're fucked oh shit. your life is done what if they punch you first doesn't matter that's manslaughter what you can't just kill someone well, if it's self-defense. If your life is a reasonably threat, I'm sure oh, there's some law, probably like in Florida threat. only. <laughs> That's insane. So the Norfolk County prosecutors have said that Reed suggested to the friends who she was with, as well as the Canton firefighter slash paramedic at the scene, that she believed she hit O'Keefe with her SUV. For example, one of the friends told police at the time that Reed called her at 5 a.m. and said, quote, John's dead. I wonder if he's dead. It's snowing. He got hit by a plow. And then it continues. Oh. I hit him. I hit him. I hit him. I hit him. She allegedly told the paramedic. But here's the thing. Her team argues that instead of I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. She comes to the house after a few hours of not hearing from her boyfriend. She sees him dead on the ground. What would you think if you dropped the last time you saw him, you dropped him off? And, and, and she was going, did I hit him? Did I hit him? Did I hit him? Because she's so confused. Mm. It's so preposterous to think that, oh, no, actually, someone in the house. What time is this in the morning? Like five or something. In the morning? And, yeah, five in the morning. She and she back. dropped him off after seven drinks at two? <laughs> 12 something what you think that she did it no oh. what do you think she's sober at five yeah a woman who's drank seven drinks do you think she's in a do you I think, think she, so I do you think she sleep? feels good i mean i'm sure she's okay seven she had diarrhea not that much she also didn't she, she could have been drinking so in four hours no, no no she went home say 20 minutes she probably took a shit, and if she's using that as an excuse, power to her. But if she's taking a shit, probably 20 minutes. No, no, no. They were at a bar where she was having the first few drinks. This was before 10. This is like 10 p.m., 9 p.m. What's, That's where she had Karen, the seven what, drinks. Can we pull up a photo, Karen? Well, what does a photo have to do with it? I'm trying to figure out how many drinks she could have. Well, she also... Well, this might change her mind on things, so... Oh, she... Oh, you know she drunk drives. You can tell. What? Okay, but would it change your mind if I said she has a brain tumor? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the brain tumor absorbs all of them. I'm kidding. That's not why I said it. But like, The brain tumor is an alcoholic. Well, they tried to argue. Well, we'll get into it in a little bit. Investigators found the SUV at her parents' house and seized it. The 2021 black Lexus SUV had a shuttered right rear tail light and several scratches on its rear bumper weight, and prosecutors have said that there were shards of glass embedded in the bumper, consistent with the glass O'Keefe had previously been seen holding. What? No, I just wanted to add dramatic effect. Oh. How would a glass be in the bumper? Is he ho is he coming out of the car with a beer bottle? That's your, the only way. Your tail lights have, have glass. glass. Yeah, but they're saying it's consistent with the drink he was drinking. How do they know what drink he was drinking? Was he drinking in the bar and he brought it in the car? Who would do that? A police officer. A stand-up police officer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, no. This is a, a true public servant drinks and drives. <laughs> this is a household full of police officers. They could all be drinking and driving as well. They all did. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. And how many of them do you think were armed? All of them. All of them. You anyway. know, I love America. <laughs> I know, it's so righteous. Anyway. America! <laughs> okay. Pieces of the taillight were also found in the snow outside of the home on Fairview Road, prosecutor said. So that's a little bit compelling, actually. Because the argument of the defense is that she backed up into a car, not, I don't think, on the same in the same house. So how no. else would there be... So on her way to go see his body... She well, backed into a car. To find him. To go find his body. She yeah. backed into a car. Okay. Yes. 
No, but we're you getting should... there. We're getting oh, there. Oh, we're sorry. Getting well, there. We're okay. Getting... Okay, this is just like the overall thing, and then we'll get into the details, okay? According to the assistant Norfolk district attorney, quote, the victim and the defendant had been arguing for quite some time, numerous times over the weeks preceding this, that on one occasion the victim had attempted to break up with the defendant, had asked her to leave his home, and she refused to do so. However, this is according to the assistant Norfolk district attorney, which, may I add, the whole conspiracy of Karen Reed being wrongfully accused is that it's a whole police department, whole Boston PD, Canton PD, district attorney Kaka cover up. So this guy would be in on it too. Now, are you sure Karen wasn't the one with black eyes? Okay, if we're gonna pretend like we're in the um, shoes of Turtle Boy, we're in the shell of Turtle we Boy. We haven't even talked about Turtle Boy oh, yet. Oh yeah, I haven't even set that up. Okay, let's just say we're, we're, we're talking on Karen Reed's defense team, but we're not lawyers. We're just like there, like, woohoo, go team, right? We're, we're consultants. We're consultants for I'll Karen. be a legal consultant. Yeah, if you need us, we're here. In case I you am need us. $50,000 an hour. Yes. I do it free if you're a premium member. But, like, okay, let's just put our little tinfoil hats on, right? Everything that we're reading about the evidence and the quotes and the district attorney, what they said, and the Can forever, I please go get tinfoil? The odds of that being not true are pretty high. If we're saying that everyone's in on this conspiracy theory to cover up, to, to defend these police officers that did something wrong, let's just say, okay? Um, but attorneys for Karen Reed continue to argue in court that authorities have accused the wrong person. Specifically, they claim he was actually badly injured. Likely inside the house, they claim that that's where he was injured, which belonged to the fellow officer, Brian Albert, and he was left to die outside in the snow. Karen Reed's team pointed to evidence on O'Keefe's body and from a search they did of a cell phone that belonged to someone else at the party as proof. They say that the state police investigator in charge of the case had ties to the homeowner. So the state police investigator that is investing this case investigating this case actually has alleged ties to brian albert the homeowner and if you have ties to someone and brian albert was perhaps the reason john o'keefe was injured and then they left him outside in the snow maybe there's a cover-up here going on um but then they say people at the party actually coordinated to point the blame falsely at reed so they had a few hours right he comes at around 12 you know, Karen Reed doesn't come back till about five. That's a long time, okay? You have you have the you can have the whole story already set. You know, they there was evidence that they were awake at two a.m. So um, and five. So who knows? Okay, we're gonna keep going. The defense elaborated on their claims in a court appearance on May third. Reed's attorney said that they have been denied access to evidence, but that the evidence that they have suggests O'Keefe actually died inside. Brian Albert's home. This is the tinfoil hat we're talking about. This is the conspiracy of John O'Keefe and the people involved. Sorry, I had to run to the kitchen to get tinfoil. Uh, Look like a turtle. Turtle boy, let's go. Costco gives you so much... Bang for the buck? So much tinfoil. So much bang for the buck. Aluminum foil hat. Okay, this is where things get interesting, okay? So John O'Keefe's body... Right, there was an autopsy done, like we said. One of his arms was found with multiple scratches slash lacerations, whatever. I don't know really the difference between it, like how deep a scratch has to go to be considered a laceration instead of a scratch, whatever. But these scratches could have been actually done by the German Shepherd that Brian Albert, the homeowner who the party was was at, his dog could have done it. What's the, the dog's Shepherd. name? Um, it's actually a female dog. I, I, I have it later on. Um, I just need the name. It's like Allie or something. It's something like random. Oh, Amy. Allie, Allie didn't hurt him. Wait, no, 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 no. But it is a little, a little compelling. Not Allie, maybe Amy. Mm. <laughs> so the defense argued that the lacerations on O'Keefe's arm after his death were not consistent with a car crash, but instead that of an animal attack, and they pointed to the German Shepherd previously owned by Brian Albert, the homeowner, which has since been rehomed, which is an interesting fact, that the dog is no longer at the house, and it's like, clearly it does have a, 
of a history of violence. According to Reed's team, Albert told a jury that his dog was inside on the night of O'Keefe's death. So if that dog was inside the house that night, not on the front lawn, not in the front yard, but inside the house, and these injuries were suffered or sustained at the time John O'Keefe was killed, then that means that John O'Keefe was inside the house when he was killed, and it also means that his body was in fact moved. Jackson, the uh, lawyer of the defense, argued. The judge in the case later granted the defense's request for any information the town has on the dog. So they first weren't even getting the information on the dog and why it was rehomed in the case. They had to uh, argue in court for that information. They were not... They were that's just, some tea. That's tea. They were just saying, oh, he was only rehomed because he bit another dog. This was after the whole John O'Keefe thing happened. This I is think months you need after. to rehome this thing. No. But before the John O'Keefe thing happened, the dog actually bit two people prior, and both times they went to the emergency room. So the dog clearly has a history oh. of violence. Neither Albert nor McCabe has been charged with the crime, and lawyers for both successfully argued this week that they should not be called as witnesses. So they were, you know, they're what? not, yeah, which is so <laughs> stupid. Oh, he just died at the same house where they were. Oh, yeah, let's not and, call them as witnesses. Yeah, no. no oh, honey. On April 12th, in a motion seeking access to Albert's phone records, the homeowner, Reed's attorneys said newly uncovered records from McCabe's phone showed she had searched the phrase, this is the, this is, this is the kicker, okay, guys? She searched the phrase, how long to die in cold? Oh! On Google, just a few hours before 911 was called to report O'Keefe was found in the snow. Lord have mercy! Now that alone, like, guilty by, like, I, 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 it could have been a late night talk. I've Googled some weird shit. Imagine though, just like coincidentally, it's like. You know, there's no such thing as a coincidence. And also we'll get into it in a little bit, but there is proof that they knew that they were at the house. Something was fishy. Something is fishy, but we'll, we'll get there, okay? In a statement at the time, Jackson and David R. Yanetti, another defense attorney, said, this evidence establishes other people were, quote, aware that John was dying in the snow before Karen even knew he was missing. And Karen Reed's attorneys say that she frantically began calling friends, including McCabe, after becoming concerned that O'Keefe had not returned home to his children. Reed's attorneys said in the court documents that McCabe quote, inserted herself into the search for O'Keefe, making every effort to delay Miss Reed and returning to the house to look for him. The defense said she, quote, insisted they drive Reed's car back to O'Keefe's home where Reed had already searched for him unsuccessfully. So they didn't want her to come. They wanted to instead drive the car back. Reed and McCabe arrived together at 6 a.m. where Reed found O'Keefe unresponsive, uh. her attorneys say. McCabe called 911 immediately after dis disconnecting with 911 dispatch. Attorneys for Reed say McCabe made two calls at 607 and 608 to a cell phone belonging to her sister, Albert's wife, who was also out with the group the previous night and deleted them from her phone. So she keeps deleting things from her phone thinking, okay, ma'am, if your brother or your whoever is a cop, you should know by now that deleting something isn't really... You're not deleting anything. Well, she did delete it. She deleted it. Is she in jail? That's true. Well. That's true. I guess it worked. Knock, knock. Who's there? John O'Keefe. Yeah! <laughs> How'd you know? John O'Keefe. How'd you know? That's so mean. Don't say that. I feel bad for him. I also kind of feel bad for Karen because there's no way. I feel bad for him. I feel bad for her, too, a little bit. I don't know if she murdered him. I don't think she did. I don't think... Why and would she murder her she boyfriend? Did, he was trying to break up with her. Well, we don't know if she's... If That could have just been the, the guy saying that. The other guy. The, I'm beginning uh, to be worried about Freddie's head here. So after she deleted that from her home... She also made an unanswered call to Albert at 623, which was also deleted. Less than a minute after that call, the lawyers also alleged McCabe opened an article titled How Long Does It Take to Digest Food? Which the defense connects with Lord the digestion process often being used by investigators to calculate the time of death. 
The attorneys add that Albert and his wife, quote, were among the first individuals to be notified that O'Keefe was lying unresponsive, mere feet away on their front lawn, and in spite of being in such close proximity, made no effort to go outside and assist or otherwise investigate the emergency that was unfolding. Hours later, McCabe allegedly, quote, or tried to sanitize her phone of contact with Albert, deleting his contact information, which had been saved under Uncle Brian A. <laughs> Not Uncle Brian A. At a court hearing Wednesday, the prosecution and the defense had different interpretations of the data and what it meant, both citing forensic experts. Uh, they said that the evidence suggests that McCabe made the search in the minutes after O'Keefe's body was found. After both sides in the case traded explanations, the judge denied the defense's request for more access to cell phone data, which is so annoying. What else could you hide? Like, why? I don't care. Like, I'm all for, like, privacy, whatever, whatever. But, like, when you're in a case like this, take it all. Like, see that I'm Googling how to get Q-tip fuzz out of my belly button. You know, like, I who cares? I feel like cares? we're missing something here. What? What? I don't know. I feel like I there's, there's something that they're not saying in the article. Yeah. When she was asked if she killed O'Keefe, Karen Reed said, we know who did. One of her lawyers, Alan Jackson, jumped in to say, no, she didn't do it. No, she didn't do it. This is an innocent woman. She didn't do it. And Reed added that when she found his body outside the home early on January 29th, I was the only one trying to save his life. Meanwhile, the what the the sister in law is like. How long does it take for him to die? <laughs> What's the digestion process? Um, but anyway, here's here comes Turtle Boy. Okay, Turtle Boy is a blogger named Aiden Kearney who has been following this case since the very beginning, since it started, and since then he has written over two hundred. I think 240 different articles with updates following this case and investigating the potential police cover-up um, and claiming Karen Reed's innocence during his whole kind of his blog, his journalism. But in October, Turtle Boy was actually taken into custody by Massachusetts State Police on several charges. Eight counts of intimidating a witness, police or court official, three counts of picketing a court judge or juror, and one count of conspiracy to intimidate a witness. In October, Turtle Boy's arraignment revealed some discussions prosecutors say he had with an Avon Police Department dispatcher as he tried to hunt down license plate information in connection with the Karen Reed case. And you will see Turtle Boy if you watch any of the news um, updates or at the courthouse. Turtle Boy is kind of leading the charge, holding the little uh, megaphone thing and calling justice for Karen Reed and, you know, calling the police, the Boston Police Department corrupt. And he's usually kind of a right wing, backing the blue kind of guy. But during this whole case, he's kind of changed his whole thing. He's been on a lot of news um, interviews and, and YouTube videos and such talking about this. And I'm not going to even say anything specifically about Turtle Boy. I think it's interesting that he's written over 200 something things on this one specific case. Yeah, he's being charged just for kind of like reporting on it, which like, I don't know. I don't know full. I haven't really investigated fully what he's being charged for. But like, come on, we have bigger fish to fry here. We have a murderer on our hands. More recently, award winning journalist Kathleen Howley organized a drive to get 200 signatures from registered voters to call for a special town meeting in Canton. And they actually received over 300 signatures and successfully got the meeting scheduled for November 20th. This is November 20th, aka a few weeks ago. The petition to hold this special town meeting's goal was to do three things in light of the police department's mishandling of John O'Keefe's murder. The town moderator opened the meeting on November 20th by stating, quote, I know there's a lot of people that are frustrated with how things have progressed in the town, and I know that people came here for a number of reasons. He continues, some people are coming here tonight to protest or to rally against or because of the arrest of Karen Reed. Some people are unhappy with the results of the last election, and some people are not happy about even having to attend a special town meeting. According to Boston25news.com, on November 20th, residents voted on a petition for an independent investigation into the police department, largely because some didn't feel they got answers about the death investigation of Boston police officer John O'Keefe. After four hours, the vote finally passed after a long delay. Our town is hurting and out of balance in ways I've never seen before, Canton resident Tom Birmingham said. It's a recipe for conflict, but also an opportunity for change. The special town meeting article passed by a vote of 903 to 800 during a session that lasted nearly four hours and drew a crowd so large that it spanned several rooms at Canton High School. 
The approved motion calls on the town's chief procurement officer or designee to proceed with an administrative policy procedures and compliance review of the police department. The article outlines a $200,000 maximum budget for the audit, which will be conducted by an independent consulting firm. So they're bringing in an independent consulting firm, max budget of $200,000, which that goes a little, a little quick. Some speakers question the need for an audit of the Canton Police Department, noting that there is already a system of checks and balances in place for police operations. Town, ac town accountant Kathy Butters, for example, <laughs> described existing audit mechanisms in Canton and argued that the proposal was redundant was redundant and a, quote, waste of town funds. Okay, but would the town funds be used any other What, what other way, huh? What are we going to do? You know, we're going to have a lemonade stand? Like, what, what, what's the, we're going to have a library event? Build a park. What are we going to build a park? Basic infrastructure. Play in your backyard. Stop right? paying we are, teachers. We don't need a park. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you, you need teachers to are people. overpaid. The evidence. The autopsy that was performed on January 31st, as I said before, said there were abrasions on the right forearm, forearm, a small cut above the right eye, two inch laceration on the back of the head, multiple skull fractures, and the dark red color of the pancreas, which shows hypothermia. Basically, they asked a bunch of doctors, is this consistent with someone being struck by a car backing up? They thought that the multiple skull fractures was, were kind of pushing it, right? A skull will not fracture without a significant impact. That's important. Mm -hmm. You have to have, I'm picked, when I hear someone has a, you know, a oh, skull stop. fracture. Oh, stop, I can't. I already have a headache. They're either like thrown out of a car from being in a car accident or like punched in the head a bunch of times. Like I could not figure out how someone backed dead. into. Basically dead. Yeah. This doesn't make sense to me. And another point that the doctors pointed out when they were talking about the autopsy of John O'Keefe was that he had no knee injuries. And someone of his build, his size, if he's standing behind a car or whatever it is and someone backed into him or in front of him, whatever, the knee would show some type of injury, right? Because that's, that's the where first thing hit. to go when you get, when you fall Especially over. Especially if it's a Lexus SUV. They're not high up. It's not a pickup truck, okay? You're not being smacked in the head. It's not like on a bunch of, imagine she's like. <laughs> well, if he was high up, you would think that he'd probably land on his arms. But if it's a lower, it's going to take his legs out. Yeah. Well, I guess he like could a hit his sweep. head on the windshield, but that still wouldn't do, I don't think, the no, fractures that No, the glass would claiming. break. Yeah. But anyway, and the scratches on the arm could be consistent, which is what the doctor said, with a rollover of a tire or maybe something under the vehicle. So maybe if it literally, like he literally was run over after he was backed up into, maybe the scratches could be from something underneath the vehicle. The cell phone that he had on him was found underneath his body, not in his pocket. So did the police officers plant that on purpose like that? Because they knew. But there is also video evidence that Karen Reed had at least six or seven drinks at the first bar within an hour and a half. Lord have mercy. Which is a lot. Um, so yes, she should not have been driving. No, I don't know if her, you know, memory is that reliable. Who says that the other, the other people did, weren't drunk too? Well, it depends on the type of drink. Jennifer McCabe, who was the homeowner's sister-in-law, around 12.40 p.m. that night, she was giving direction, or sorry, 12.40 a.m., John McCabe, or sorry, Jennifer McCabe, the sister-in-law, was giving directions to John O'Keefe on where to park. And then five minutes later, after she said, you know, park, whatever, whatever, she texts him again saying, hello, question mark. And then people in the house said that they never saw him after this whole thing. They didn't even see him at the house, they said. Even though they said park behind here, so they knew that they, he was almost going to be there. And then, and then she texts, hello. And then you don't look out your window. You don't wonder where are they. You don't want to call. You don't want to, you know, that just doesn't seem, unless you guys are that shit face that you forgot completely about the two guests that were supposed to come. Or they're just bad friends. I guess. But like what you said, hello, five minutes later, and then you forgot about them for the rest of the night. Wait, That's did all the stupid. people just sleep in the house? Yeah, probably. They didn't work. Imagine they're just having like a five hour long. Session. And that's their alibi. Yeah. <laughs> it's like recorded. <laughs> But anyway, the people in the house claim that they never even saw John O'Keefe. And 2.27 a.m., that's when Jennifer McCabe Googles how long to die in the cold. Which is way after Karen Reed leaves. That's a little random. <laughs> that's a little sketchy, Jennifer. 
And also, like, why are you the one texting him hello? Question mark. Like when you when she throw texts- him off their trail. Also, why did she delete it? There's also data from the Apple Health app that says that John O'Keefe took 80 steps after he was at the house and specifically went up and down approximately three flights of stairs. This is what the defense says. But the prosecution, they argue that he didn't even enter the home. So I don't even want to talk about the cell phone data because I don't even know if I can believe it. Karen Reed's defense team had a victory, finally, apparently, when the judge granted motion to gain access to Canton Animal Control Records to find out about the homeowner, Brian Albert's dog, because they refused... Oh, I found her name, finally. It's Chloe. Oh, she did it. <laughs> she did she it. Did That's it. like the most innocent name ever. Guilty. Though. Guilty, Chloe, the German Shepherd. You- With my minion croc. Guilty. <laughs> okay. Guilty as charged. So who do you think did it? I think Karen Reed is innocent. I plead her innocent. But I'm not a legal expert. I don't really know. I don't really understand. I'm any- a legal expert. I don't know about that. But anyway. <laughs> Um, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Per usual, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and become a member if you want some more content from us because we do the live streams. We comment back on you. can get fun little emojis from us. We hope you guys have a great week, and we'll see you guys next time here on College and Convos. Bye. Bye.